Well, hello everybody. We are live Tuesday, just November 29th. It is my birthday. So I'm going live a couple hours early because I have a treat for myself, which will teach you a little bit about how big of a nerd I am. But I also have a show that I've been trying to count down to and I've had a few missed uh, starts for wanting to do this show and it is, I am ready, I am ready, I am ready. Uh, and I think you're gonna love to be part of this. So uh, thanks for tuning in. We are gonna start tonight by uh, telling you that that uh, thumbnail where I'm puckered up <laughs> has a, a history lesson behind it that I think you're gonna love hearing about. We are gonna start with uh, the tradition of checking my numbers. I am in a pretty good fast and uh, like my recent uh, videos, I'm trying to stress my metabolism at least once during my fast. This fast was post Thanksgiving <laughs> and I definitely had things that were filled with carbs. <laughs> so I fasted um, uh, knowing that I probably should do some, do some cleanup in the world of uh, how do I get better uh, results by Tuesday. And so I'm gonna show you my ketones and glucose. I did get a stress to my system on Sunday with husband as we went to the sauna. And then I um, did a workout yesterday that was pretty good. Um, oh, I don't think that's gonna have enough blood. Oh shoot. All right, I have to poke again. So that glucose is 64, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but I need a little bit more blood for this one. Uh, I turned the air conditioner up and I'm a little chilly apparently. Oh, I bet you now I need a whole new meter. Hang tight. Oh, yeah, it's going to yell at me. Try again. Okay. All right, so for those of you newbies, when you do this, you got to put that in there, and then can you see the flashing trickle of blood? You got to have that flashing before you can uh, put your little um, pipette into the right spot. So there's my glucose at 64, and I actually did a, a glucose about an hour and a half ago. It was 47. I was not feeling very good, though. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I expected my ketones to bounce it because my ketones at the time were only like, I don't know, they were like around one. And so I was like, dang, that glucose was low. But this feels a lot better, 64. Ketones at 3.1. And uh, I... I'm, I will be checking them maybe even more than once during the show just to show you a couple of things that I think you're going to be happy to hear about. So I have a couple quick announcements before we dive into that content because uh, I, I, I tortured a few people to get this content for you. <laughs> we will tell you who they are in a minute. Uh, and I do appreciate all of you checking in, knowing that my sound is working. I, 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 you are my live um producers telling me that you can hear and see me so I truly appreciate that and all of the birthday wishes so thank you thank you thank you for saying that um, somebody else says yes um, looking for the a1c to improve and I I will be checking mine in January and my goal for the holiday season is to not get worse because I was down to 5.1 and I do think after the next 21 day challenge I'll have it in the fours because I did a lot better job when everybody else was being good with me. <laughs> uh, let me just do a couple of things. I am also uh, been practicing a little bit of my speech that I get to give uh, early January. It is in Boca, 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 Florida, and it is through the organization Low Carb USA. If you go to Low Carb USA, you have um, here's just a couple things that I'll you to look into so i'm going to dive into this thing that says events and then under the events boca uh, 2023 on january 13 through 15 this is um uh, part of what i get to be a part of and there's, there's just quite a lineup of people that are coming my lecture on a1c is um is it's it's it, it's, it's good <laughs> i like what i'm about to say and i'm adding some Pretty good animation to make it easier for you to understand um, and to offer what I think is uh, the, uh, the content worth uh, at least supporting this uh, organization. If you can't travel and you're looking for continued medical education, there are only a couple of places that you get to have that. Uh, and this organization does have that. They allow you to have continued education for the lectures that you sit through. And boy, there's nothing like that. 
Um, the second thing that I have been uh, doing an okay job of of advertising is because um, I, I I swear I, I I am better at this than I was a year ago, but um, this uh, this is um, my brains course. So inside our course, I am about to show you um, how. Uh, and actually, I think it's is that what I want to do? I wanted to show it. There's two ways I can show you this. Oh, here's what I did the wrong way. That is, oh, that's the iPad screen grab. That's what I want. Okay, yes, this is what I wanted. Um, when I offer my brains course, I, I put out a couple of emails that I don't know if you guys clicked on it, but I had a video inside the email. And the video shared, how do I get ready for 2023? How do I get ready for a new year? How do I journey through some tough times? And uh, it's through this content that I've put together in the brains course that uh, really does uh, help me reset, uh, reset in a way that's genuine, that doesn't have prescriptions. It's all about educating and then just re-engaging on the level of commitment. So um, this this page in here teaches about what the brains course is about. And um, uh, there is a, uh, a coupon that is still good uh, through the through tomorrow that will get you $500 off of the price of this. $2,500 is what the price of this course is. I know that's expensive. Uh, I am really looking for people who are dialed in to really learn this. Um, I, I want you to share the cost with a friend and use, watch the course together. Um, that helps you learn it better. It also helps it be more affordable for everybody that is truly interested. Uh, and I've just found that the people who want to not only sh help their loved ones that are struggling with a, a, an injured brain, whether that's addiction, chronic depression, chronic migraines, um, there have been several areas in my practice where the hardest part about getting the patient better was that I couldn't educate the family fast enough. Uh, and they kept telling things to the, uh, to the patient that was, it wasn't true. And it, it hurt the patient and it decreased our progress. So uh, I lead that course in the month of December. Every Tuesday in the month of December, you'll have a live meeting with me where we'll go through some of the curriculum of what, what we review in, in different chunks. And then I will assess everybody's brain who is a new student. And it's super fun for me to remind patients, uh, remind people what uh, what is the best way to have a great brain heading into the new year that doesn't have a bunch of foo-foo. It's these are the rules about how human brains work and how they heal and how if you've had an injury in the past, this is how to get it better. But also if you're trying to help somebody else with an injury, here's how you work on you. Um, so I, I love it. It's my favorite thing to do. It's my favorite way to celebrate the season of teaching yeah, and selfishly, I get better too. So uh, I'm looking forward to all of you that have signed up. It's going to be a great class and um, we'll see you next Tuesday. You'll be getting an email about that later on this week. But if you haven't signed up, uh, the coupon works through tomorrow. So, all right. So I am going to try to cover a topic that I have been putting off. I've actually shared the topic with some of my um some of my folks here in the support group, uh, they we meet every Tuesday morning at eight o'clock. Uh, we meet at the Pin Chasers, which is the bowling alley in the parking lot of my office. Um, my office space does not have enough real estate for all, for a group of people, but boy, the bowling alley has nobody at it at eight o'clock, so they gladly let me rent it out for an hour and, and so each Tuesday morning, and it is free. Anybody who wants to learn about the ketogenic diet or just ask questions, see what it is that I do to keep my health up, and really create a community of people improving their health in a way that is very cost effective. I do that for free because I really am committed to enriching the place where I live. Uh, so if, if you are in the area and you're looking for a support group, come on by 4809 North Armenia, Tampa, and every Tuesday at eight o'clock, without exception, we meet at the bowling alley. But what I've been teasing them with is um, I've been working on a product that I, I, really I really thought would be out last year. <laughs> and I had enough setbacks and enough reasons why it did not happen last year that um, I am really, really excited to announce that 
the uh, product of Pucker Up is finally available. So I had enough of the folks at the support group ask really good questions that I thought, there's no way I can launch this without educating the people how it works, why in the heck I made it, uh, and why it is, you got to be careful. <laughs> it is really strong. Um, and I'm going to try to weave through that uh, story for you tonight. Um, I, I will tell you, I, I am looking for your questions. If you type in your questions, my, my team is helping me on the other side. And I'd like to put a preference towards any of the products that I have that you have a question about. I'm trying to capture that in a place where people can come, ask the question, you know, look where all the questions get answered. So I'll be reviewing a few of the other products um, uh, as I go through this, but um, I don't want you to um, not ask the questions. I want you to post the questions and I will review them. So let's start with the rule uh, that I don't have um, a product in my lineup without it being used in my own family. So it took a lot for me to step over a threshold to make products in the first place. I am a physician. I like writing a prescription, knowing exactly where it comes from, that it's been FDA approved. And all that kind of goes out the window when you start looking at the world of products. But as I was taking care of patients that were sicker than what I was expecting and, and really needed a prescription level of product, I... I finally said I can't trust what was happening in the other patients, in the other products, and really um, had, thank you, uh, really had the desire to get a bloody nose again and again by making my own products. And I don't regret that. There's been a steep learning curve, but the patients who needed quality products without a bunch of other foo-foo in it, um, they, we couldn't, they were spending a lot of money and they weren't getting what we said they should get. So when I stepped over that threshold, I, I quickly realized that as a physician making products, I was being heavily marketed to put a whole bunch of things on the market. And I said, I'm not doing that unless somebody in my immediate family is taking them. So that started with um, the putting ketones in supplements and having exogenous ketones. This was specifically started uh, because as I would take care of a patient undergoing chemotherapy, a patient who has seizure disorder, uh, a patient who had um, severe autoimmune problems, they were still getting their medical treatment, but to get their ketones where they needed to be, it was, it, it, they kept crashing. They kept not being able to keep their ketones high enough. I then learned over time that if the patients were insulin resistant enough, they would do a good job for a while, but their ketones would fall. And although we could burst them up again, we only could do that if their life, if the timing in their life was in a season where they could really be committed. And I could motivate somebody who's fighting cancer or who has got seizures to be that committed, but the insulin resistance, this chronic long journey, that sometimes I just can't push them, but I didn't want their, I didn't want them to slip away from having the mechanics in their cells able to use a ketone. I'll explain that more in a minute. Uh, so I'm gonna start with how Pucker Up came to be. So Pucker Up has one ingredient in it. It is liquid BHB. So BHB is the ketone that is in circulation. When I just checked my ketones there, I was looking for beta hydroxy. Uh, butyric acid in my uh, BHB in my blood. Uh, well, it turns out, just like I can check for glucose in my blood, I can check for ketones in my blood. And I can swallow glucose, watch my glucose go up. Uh, I can swallow ketones and watch my ketones go up. And I, um, uh, the traditional way to put ketones in circulation for have a, having exogenous ketones uh, is to take that liquid BHB and mix it with a salt. Uh, so you, it is actually in the form, liquid BHB is beta hydroxybutyric acid, <laughs> which sounds like something you shouldn't try to market. Um, and liquids are not typically very portable. So the industry was all making powders. And although the powders were the most common thing, they would mix them with calcium or 
uh, they would the, the kind of the minerals uh, or salts that they would mix them with would be calcium, sodium, potassium, and magnesium. And the combination of those four salts would be what what kind of powder you ended up with. So the first thing I did that with was um, let's see if I have that back there was the raspberry BHB. The, uh, I think I have this one. Oh yeah, here we go. This is a raspberry one, the raspberry lemonade. That was the first product I made. Uh, to date, of all the powders I make, it still has the highest percentage of ketones in it. And it is pretty tart. Personally, I like that. I think it tastes good. Um, and as I tried to give this to my husband, uh, he broke out in blisters in his mouth because he's allergic to ragweed, which is um, a cousin. I mean, it's stevia and ragweed are in the same family. So stevia is the sugar that I put inside this uh, supplement to make it taste good because Pucker Up is the straight BHB liquid and it's named Pucker Up for a reason. <laughs> it is beta hydroxybutyric acid, which tastes like a really sour lemon. Uh, so after my husband broke out in a rash, uh, I put ketones in a capsule, called them ketones in a capsule. There's no stevia in it. It's all the salts in it, and it, it doesn't cause my husband to have a rash. But it turns out I don't always want to have something sweet. And there's plenty of people out there that when you first enter into the ketogenic diet, that sweetness is comforting. We've been probably overeating sweets. And as you look at some of those supplements, they eat the, the sweet supplements and don't have a problem. But um, what became very obvious pretty quickly was that the amount of salt that you would have to make, that you would have to produce uh, in uh, those capsules, it was taking a lot of capsules, like seven, eight, nine capsules to get what I thought you should be able to get from one dose of a liquid BHB. In this process, um, my husband, I was trying to figure out flavors and see how could I use this, and I had this liquid bottle of BHB at our house. And my husband asked what it was, and I said, well, that's liquid ketones before you do anything to it, before you add the flavors, before you add the salts, before you do the chemistry to make it into a powder. And he goes, do you think I'd be allergic to it? I'm like, nope. <laughs> In fact, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't because it's a ketone and it's just an acid. So he starts taking a liquid BHB and, oh my goodness, his ketones would just shoot up. Now, he's a male and he makes ketones way better than I do. Um, but as long as he took a shot of that BHB, that liquid BHB, I mean, he would like not go out of ketosis. Which brings me back to some of the things I was trying to do with those cancer patients. That when people take um, liquid BHB, or take any kind of BHB, exogenous BHB, um, it, it adds ketones to your circulation, and yes, it will do some obvious things. Uh, once a ketone is in circulation, it has two destinies. It can only be either burned or it can be, or you pee it out. You just wait. You cannot restore a ketone once it's in a ketogenic state. And when I would ask patients to fast, uh, at first I let them take the... Uh, supplements of a, a, an oil. Uh, CHC10 is the the uh, median medium chain triglyceride that when they swallow that oil, um, it goes into the liver and the liver spins out ketones. But if you're really insulin resistant, you actually don't turn all of that into ketones. Some of it gets stored, and so there was a there's plenty of times where I would people would be just drinking all this oil, and they would either flush it out in the toilet, or they would just not be able to bump their ketones any higher than a certain level. So um, I, I then switched my approach to saying, if you're fasting, don't put in the oil, just put in that ketone. Because when you put in the oil, if you're trying to enhance your body's metabolism, there's still a couple of paths where you could bounce that, um, those, that oil into a stored unit of energy. Just like if you eat a lot of sugar, you are going to burn some of that sugar right away. You're going to put some of that other sugar uh, or carbohydrates into glycogen, which is stored glucose. And then if there's a whole bunch more sugar, you're going to spin it into fat. So you put in carbohydrates, 
there's lots of pathways you can spend them. You swallow a bunch of oil and you're in the, in the setting of trying to enhance your metabolism. You can put that oil in storage instead of just making yourself a stronger ketogenic state. But if you swallow ketones, the only thing you can do with it, you cannot store them. You can only either burn it inside a mitochondria or pee it out if you don't have, if you don't use it in two hours. And at first, that's the only thing I talked about with patients is that this is what you can do with it. This is a great way to do that. But I'm actually going to um, drink um, my first example of this while I finish telling you that. Because as I was taking care of some of those cancer patients or some of those seizure patients, so I want you to notice how I opened that. And I'm going to not put the whole thing in here. I'm gonna have maybe half of it. Because, well, first I'm gonna taste it to show you that, that picture from <laughs> picture from the thumbnail. It's because it's very sour. Oh my goodness, it's sour. Now, as a person who's been in ketosis a long time, um, I like the sour a lot better than the sweet hoofta. And um, all right, so I'm going to be drinking this. I mixed this with um, the uh, keto combo. Let me grab that quick. So the bags of this, which are almost all sold out. I don't get to sell those after January 1st. They have exogenous ketones in it. They have MCT in it, but it also has stevia, which is this you know, sweetened sugar. And when you first go on the ketogenic diet, it doesn't taste so bad. I mean, it tastes sweet, it tastes fine. But then as your palate adapts, the slightest sweetness is just too sweet. I don't like it. I want it to be more sour. But if you dilute it down, then you don't get very many ketones. So to spike it with some ketones, like the liquid ketones, oh, that's a good idea. So I'm gonna drink some of this while I finish telling you about why in the world would I want people to swallow a ketone in my practice. And you get a lot of physicians that are that play ketogenic diet uh, that say, oh, you can make your own ketones. Yes, when you first go on a ketogenic diet, that stress of your metabolism, of lowering the carbohydrates to 20 or less, people make ketones, that's not a problem the human body will always try to reset back to the least wasteful setting when it comes to energy. That it's going to reduce the amount of ketones you produce unless you put it under a metabolic stress. You hear me talk about in my fast, I had two stresses this weekend. I went into a sauna, which was exposing my body to heat, making my body work. And then I did a workout on Monday, which was again, exposing my body to heat, but really pushing my muscles uh, to burn energy. And those stresses keep my ketone production high, especially when I do that during my fast. So do not start there, people. I did not do that for about three or four years into this ketogenic uh, journey of having an additional stress besides fasting every week. But what has been, um, what I want to teach people about, because I get this question a lot, is why would I take ketones if I, if I'm pretty lean, if I am not really looking to lose any weight, why would I take extra ketones? Mm, it is so much better with the sourness in it. Oh, that's really good. Um, so that ketogenic state of having ketones in circulation, when they first go on a ketogenic diet, they drop their carbs and they get like, they get wild ketone numbers. They're like 2.4, they, they, their urine ketone strip is like neon purple. And in our support group, <laughs> there's this hairy eyebrow that comes out saying, Rawr, I can't get my ketones higher than 0 0.4. Why, why are her ketones right on the ketogenic diet 3.1 or 2.6? And there becomes this like envy for ketones. But it's because that drop of the carbs was 20 and it really stressed the system. And then the person adapts and their ketone number is a little lower. But if they're like most of the patients that I see or most of the patients that come to the support group, they have chronic problems. They need to keep those ketones in production because there are other things happening about uh, when you swallow an exogenous ketone. Uh, so yes, it will suppress your appetite. In fact, um, caffeine also suppresses your appetite. And uh, the suppression of appetite when you have a high ketogenic state is about three times more powerful than caffeine is for 
suppressing that appetite. The other thing that uh, happens is that it's energy. So ketones are a fuel. So you put them in your circulation and you have a little energy. They cross the blood-brain barrier so that energy is accessible to your the, the neurons, the astrocytes that produce um, energy in your brain. But the other thing that's, um, that's happening that people don't often talk about that is especially important for those patients with those advanced problems like cancer. Uh, they come into the ketogenic world, they usually right in, in crisis, I, my mom has cancer, I, ha I have cancer, my, my husband has cancer, and I wanna push them into a state of ketosis. And they're not ready for all of these steps, they don't have the time to really adapt their system as quickly as I would want them to. Um, so by swallowing a ketones, um, what the, the, there are several messages that get sent to different parts of the body. The first message I point out is by swallowing ketones, you're gonna have ketones in circulation for a couple of hours. It's gonna talk to any, any lazy cell that hasn't burned a ketone in a while and say, hey, you should upregulate the mechanics to better use me, use that ketone. Uh, the other part that it will do is it signals to the liver, hey, there's a bunch of ketones around. We must be in a famine. I need you to make more ketones. So ketones in circulation talk to the mitochondria in the liver to make more ketones, which is why my husband could take a little shot of this liquid ketones, liquid BHB, and not only, I mean, it only lasts a couple hours. So if you don't use it, you pee it out. But there's a signaling that goes on that allowed him to produce ketones for, for heck, his, his mitochondria are way better than mine. He would produce ketones for two or three days after one shot. Uh, he also probably wasn't as insulin resistant as I've been. Um, so there was two things that going on there. But the next part gets a little technical, but is really important to my cancer patients. And that is when your body goes to divide a cell, um, it's going to naturally make mistakes in the way it winds the uh, DNA and then unwinds the DNA. And ketones and circulation, even the ones that you swallow, communicate with something uh, called the histone deacetylase uh, process. And this is super geeky and most people don't care, but think of it as how the, the DNA unwinds the string of, of the code of your DNA and then winds it back up. And when you do that in a, a setting where ketones are around, less mistakes are made, uh, less forgiveness of an error happens. Meaning if an error happens, shut down, throw that cell away. They, 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 they don't keep broken cells as well when that ketone was in circulation. And when, when I mean, essentially you're, you're pushing autophagy, that recycling of proteins at a higher, more efficient, more crisp way where you do not make errors in your in the ketone or in the replication of cells so in a cancer patient we're giving them chemotherapy or radiation to kill off part of the cells in their body and then they need to shoot cleanup for any damaged cells or any um you know cells that made a mistake while they were dividing or any cells that are kind of just debris that all needs to be cleaned up in the process of this cancer patient and if, the, if we could get a high layer of ketones in circulation, oh, just did such a better job. Less inflammation, cleaner processes, the cell dividing was, uh, is, is better, there's less mistakes. Uh, and if you wanna see a problem, you try to get ketones in a patient that just went through chemotherapy. It's terrible. Uh, it is, the ketones are 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, they cannot get off the floor. But liquid ketones did it. <laughs> Liquid ketones would shoot that back up to uh, a really good level. Oh, that's so good. All right, so I, I want to be able to check my ketones for you. So that's why I'm trying to drink that as I tell you the story. So, so let's review. Why do I want ketones in circulation? Number one, ketones suppress appetite. Most of the people are on this diet because they're trying to lose weight. Number two, it gives them energy, not only for their heart and their body and their muscles, but for their brain. Number three is it is uh, a signal to the liver that circulating ketones push the liver to make more ketones. Number four, uh, it talks to your histone deacetylase system, which means you have a higher CRISPR replacement of cells. I like to think of it as when you're replacing cells in the human body, 
you want the most youthful, squishy, flexible, perfect cells. And when we get old, <laughs> today's my birthday, when we get old, we don't do that as well. But in a state of ketosis, they do it the best possible in their bodies. So I'm really uh, hoping you see that, yes, this is not um, a, not a, just a, oh, drink ketones and then you don't have to make them. No, I want you to make them. Your body should make them. That there are several people that I did this little experiment on um, because in the last week, I think I got like 20 boxes of uh, ketones to, maybe it was only 12. I don't know. They're all gone though. <laughs> like everybody I know has taken some saying, it's so good. My ketones got so much better. Um, so I was trying to write the copy for how to talk about Pucker Up, this uh, new product that is on the website. I'll, t I'll show you where it's at in just a second. Uh, and I need I need um, Angela to put in the chat whether or not there was a coupon th that we get to have for this or not. I, I gave it to her at the last minute. And I don't know if she was had time to do it. So we'll see if that shows up in the in the chat for a little discount. Hmm. The um, the copy that you write for a product though is supposed to tell about it. And so I, I, I did try to say, look, as an internist, I want the highest return for the patient's money. That when I look at what I could put in Pucker Up, one of these liquid ketone, uh, ketone powders, um, the response in the, the ketone rise with liquid compared to the capsules was like, like seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, sometimes 12 capsules to get what I would get with one shot of ketones. Uh, liquid ketones. So the ketones in a capsule where they mix it with the salt and they put it in a capsule, it's not bad. It doesn't have any stevia in it. It's plain ketones, but it's got the salt in it. So the absorption was different and I, it just took a lot more volume of the salt to get what I could get in a, essentially a shot of liquid ketones. And the place that I found it to be, that I thought would be the perfect place to use it would be as I made these other supplements, this was the ras the strawberry lemonade, which might be my favorite. And this one's the raspberry one, so I wanna just pour that back and forth just because I want every drop of ketone to end up in my circulation here. And while I'm talking, I'm gonna put the other, it's about half. Uh, I might've put a lot of it in the first one. Well, that didn't get very much in that one. So, um, I have another one I could put in there, but let's just see how sour it is. Mm, definitely not as sour as the first one. So I put most of it in the first one. And I really like it sour. Like again, once your palate gets used to not having, um, uh, oh good, <laughs> Angela did a good job. Um, once the sour gets, um, uh, once the sweetness gets to be too sweet, it's like the taste buds that are in charge of sour are my favorite. So I, I, I called this Pucker Up Clear because there is, let see how it says Pucker Up, uh, clear ketones. There's nothing else in it. That's all it is, is clear ketones. This is just liquid BHB, one simple product. Um, so I went to my support group last week and said, all right, we are gonna do an experiment. I have this new product and I'd kind of been teasing them about it. I had one cancer patient that I just really wanted her to have it during her chemotherapy treatment because like most of my patients, she did a great job of holding the production of ketones. But I mean, if you've walked with somebody during a season of, uh, of chemo, it's hard. I mean, it's hard to stay disciplined. It's hard to stay motivated. It's, and their ketones just go to nothing. But um, so I, I, I not zipped my lips as much as I wanted to. I told them about it. And so when they heard, oh my gosh, we're gonna get to check out ketones today, I had everybody in the room, I have all of their numbers here, check their blood ketones and uh, check their blood glucose. And then everybody <laughs> got a straight shot of this, just just the product to swallow like, like I did in the <laughs> thumbnail where I'm so puckered up. <laughs> because it's like drinking concentrated lemon juice. It's like really sour. It's lemony sour. Uh, and then I had them check their ketones afterwards. And so I have a few of them where I'm gonna tell you their numbers. And I could go through all of them and say, um, 
everybody's ketones did rise. Some of them rose an amazing amount. And some of them only rose a little bit. And I have some theories as to why. I don't know if I'm going to have the, the time to go through all of them. But um, there's a few. So I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i talk about a couple of them. Uh, so the first one I'm going to tell you about, her numbers went from a glucose of 119. Uh, now, it was the morning. She already had a little coffee, so that's not a fasting number. Her ketones were 1.4. And after uh, 15 minutes after the shot of ketones, <laughs> she had a glucose of 112. And... I mean, uh, yeah, glucose of 112, so her glucose actually went down, but her ketones went up to 3.3. And she talked about the rest of the day, um, she felt good. She didn't have any, like, any bad side effects or anything. Um, she did say that she had this irritation in the back of her throat for, like, 24 hours, saying it was just, like, it was so harsh on the back of her throat that um, it... it it, she would say that would be the negative side effect that she had from, from her ketones. But she did notice that her blood sugar stayed under 100 for the next day, and her ketones stayed between 2 and 3 the next day. Now, this patient is a pretty good ketone producer. She's been solid in the ketogenic state. She comes to group a lot. She's very committed. And I would say that her insulin resistance, although has been there in the past, is not terrible now. Um... All right, let's move on to another person because that's one answer. That's one reaction that happened. <clears throat> um, next one is a lovely woman, and her, her husband actually comes, but her husband didn't come last week. It was just her, and she is, oh, she's lovely. <laughs> uh, she's new to the ketogenic journey, and just like lots of people on the ketogenic journey, she was ready to hop all the way to fasting as quickly as possible. And we said, wait, 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 slow down, slow down. You got to be keto adapted. You really got to get used to this. And... Uh, she she had um, showed up to group last week, and her blood sugar was 84, which is really good for her, and her ketones were 0 0.3. And it's the kind of season she's been in where she's been really insulin resistant. Again, she's new. She kind of has had her wave of the ketones being good, and now she's hitting this plateau. Um, and it's hard for her to get them bumped up because that means she has to be super disciplined, not just the kind of discipline that she was at the beginning. She has to really step it up a notch and... It's hard. It's hard to do that. Uh, so she then uh, checked her glucose 10 minutes or 15 minutes later after she took uh, took a shot of this, and she had a blood sugar of 94 and ketones of 3.2. And she said, "Oh my gosh, I felt so good. Like I've had troubles with feeling sluggish at whenever I eat, and I I even was able to eat, and I just felt good. I did not feel hungry." Um, and she had a pretty busy day the next day, uh, the next 24 hours. Um, but when she woke up the next day, her ketones went back to what they had been before, which was in the 0 0.5 range, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, not in the 2, 3, or 4 range. And I, I just think that example of a really good improvement for several hours is what I was, when I looked through all like 25 people that were at group, uh, if they have a, a really a struggle with insulin resistance, it makes a difference short term, but they would have to take maybe two doses a day or maybe um, at least one dose a day and then check their numbers later on. And if their numbers sunk, then I would have them re repeat the dose. Um, unlike what happened with the first person who said, I just felt good for the next two or three days and my numbers were, too, were high. And I think of that story as they were able to take in the ketones, really get a good burst of ketones, and their mit her mitochondria were really responsive. They, she produced a high level of ketones for two or three days because her ketone, her mitochondria are in way better shape than the gal who did good for 24 hours and then went back to what she had always been at. Now, there's several other really good stories, but I want to make sure that I cover this in the time you have left. But there was one guy who is new to the ketogenic diet. He had been coming, it was his first time he came, so I didn't know him that well. Um, but he uh, he showed up to group with a glucose of 92 and ketones of 2.3. Now, he's lean. The reason he's on the ketogenic diet is not for weight loss. I would say he doesn't have a lot of um, insulin resistance that, I, if I remember correctly, he was doing it for improved brain performance is why he was there. Now, he took the shot like everybody else but he weren't, you know, he was like, I have a sensitive stomach and 
like every time my kids got sick, I would get sick. And when I go to the dentist, I'm a nightmare because I have, you know, a very sensitive stomach and I can gag really easily. But he shot his, key, his, his blood sugar essentially stayed the same, 92 before he took it. 15 minutes later, it was 94. Uh, but then he took this shot and he, his ketones went up to 4.4. But he got diaphoretic. He got started to sweat. He got a little pale. I got a little worried. <laughs> and then he said, I got to go to the bathroom. And he threw up because it was too much for his system to handle. Now, I checked on him a couple more times throughout the day. Uh, the next morning, his blood sugar was like in the 120 range, 119 range. But his ketones were still at 3.6. Like, he has... Uh, not as much insulin resistance or and that's my theory because again this is still something i'm learning about but it, it brings me back to what i intended this um pucker up to be for which is in a place where um i thought most people would use it is i'd put it in with a supplement that you already have i would put it in the liquid that is um got a little bit of sweetener in but it's much more diluted than what what it, what i I like, I can't mix this in the normal way anymore. It's too sweet. I don't like the, it's too sweet for me. That's not how it was when I first started. Uh, when I look at some of the other products, like cucumber lemon, awesome flavor. But to me, it's still too sweet. I have to dilute it out. And of course, if you dilute it out, then you don't have as many ketones. So I would put Pucker Up into another supplement. Because you have high ketones and you have no, no, no added extra sweetener. But the other place that I really have come to love bubble water and putting a little lemon in my bubble water is perfect. So the way I drank it for like the next three days was I just added it to my, my bubble water, my Perrier, my Pel San Pellegrino. And it was great, super refreshing. I put one pack of ketones in there and I put it in and I mean, it, it was great. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. The bubbles didn't, if you put the salts into the bubbles, it just destroys the bubbles. The salt reacts with the carbon dioxide and it just goes flat. But the pucker up, it did not make it go flat. And so I have my husband who's taking it with, he took it with a shot. And this is my husband with an iron stomach who, when we go deep sea fishing, I can be puking if the waves are like three foot high. And he is like 50, 20 foot waves. He's like, what are you puking for? Is that, is that, is, you know, he just does not get sick. I mean, in 30 years with this man, I've seen him sick twice and one was uh, a real way too much alcohol in, <laughs> in Vegas and another time was he was actually really sick but he got nauseated from the shot of, of ketones so what I'm trying to tell you is this is really potent do not shoot this like, of a shot do not do that in fact what my husband does is he puts about this much water in and he puts the the dose in he's done this all week um, and then he drinks the water with it in. And he goes, that doesn't cause my stomach to do anything. But his ketones are just, I mean, they're really sexy. They're really good. They're way better than mine. <laughs> but the best part of the story is what happened with my kids. So as many of you know that follow the show, I have three sons. My youngest son is 16, and it's wrestling season. So every Saturday morning, going from now until like March, he has to make weight. And his mother will not let him cut serious weight, uh, but I am all about peak performance of his muscles while not slowing down the brain development by depriving his body, his brain of fuel. And let me tell you, if you wanna see crabby teenagers, make them cut weight as a boy at 16 without brain fuel. So I've been telling him, you should just, have you know drink the you know drink the ketones in a can drink the ketones in a can and I actually think that he is like a lot of people that the sweet the sweet taste of a supplement makes him want sugar it makes him want to eat and so it makes it harder for him to just stay the course of eating sardines for three days so that he makes weight so this past week I was trying to think of if I ever added another product line to pucker up this is Pucker Up Clear. All that's in here is BHB. You will, you're going to think it's lemon flavored, but it's just BHB. And any other product where you put the flavor with it has to go well with lemon. It has to be have a sour. 
So I was thinking, what flavor out there do I know of that is like a sweet tart? Like it's a very sweet, liquidy flavor that is attractive. And as much as I hate this, my kids said, Mom, you should mix it with Red Bull. And I don't like Red Bull. I mean, I, I'm like, oh, gosh, it's so sweet. And I don't, okay. but I'm like, well, let me just see what the flavor is like. So we stop at a dollar store on the way after wrestling and we put a can, uh, one of these in a, a little can of, of Red Bull. Oh my goodness. It was so good. Uh, again, teenagers will not drink things on purpose unless it's really good. Um, in preparation for this week's cut weight, uh, my son is not drinking coffee on the way to school like he usually does. Uh, he is drinking a Red Bull with a shot of Pucker Up in it. And I, he's, and I did explain this. His Pucker Up is sugar-free. Um, there's a few vitamins in it. There's some caffeine. There's not as much caffeine in the Red Bull as there was in his coffee, so it's actually less caffeine. But there's this fuel that cannot be stored. He will not add weight to his system if he doesn't burn it if he doesn't burn the ketones in here, he'll pee them out. If his brain needs fuel, it has it. It crosses the blood-brain barrier. His schoolwork should not be compromised. Uh, he has a teenage boy, so it could be distracted, but it, it's not a fuel problem. And when you look at the protection that when you cut weight as a wrestler, you do not want to cut muscle. So what is the one thing that needs to be high in order to say, is he cutting his muscle over the next few days, which would compromise his strength? Not if there's ketones in circulation. That's the other thing that gets signaled when people have exogenous ketones, is that the weight that they will lose is preferentially fat, not muscle, which is, of course, what you would want for a wrestler. All right, so I've talked a lot about what I am trying to teach you, which is supplements in the ketogenic world are done very... Um, I don't wanna say casually, because they think a lot about them, but they do not think like an internist. That I didn't step into this world because I think I'm brilliant at this. I just don't want a lot of messiness in these supplements. And it's expensive, so I want you to use it in a way that's not wasteful. And taking a shot of this is wasteful. Put it in your bubble water, drink it over a couple of hours. If you're not like my husband, you can put it in some water and drink it with some water, but. I'd be checking your numbers before, checking your numbers after, and if you get a tummy ache, then you drank it too fast or you had too high a concentration. And you're gonna pee it out. It's not gonna work as well if you put it in too fast. Uh, it's expensive. It's expensive for me to make. It's, this is not the biggest money funnel for my business. I make the most teaching people how to do this and through the courses, which I try to be as generous as I possibly can with. Uh, I want people to learn this. I want people to have the health that my mother got because I was her daughter teaching her front lines how to use the science behind a ketogenic diet. And it comes out pretty fast. Like this conference I'm going to in January, I'm gonna get continuing medical education because I wanna hear from my colleagues. How are you using this? How are you transforming the lives of patients behind that exam room door? What, what ways have you seen that change the lives of patients? And there is not a textbook out there that you can read that keeps you as up to date as what conferences do. So I, I am doing my best to overly educate that the two places that I found that I was surprised about was how great this works in bubble water. And that's my favorite way to do it. Um, I hope that if you have ketones and you like sweetness, you haven't quite figured out how to give up the sweetness yet, that the combination of the powdered supplements plus extra ketones fits a palate that's not so sweet. And then if you're a fan of Red Bull, <laughs> I, I can't, I cannot believe how good it tastes. I wish it wasn't true. <laughs> but the first time I make a flavor, it might take a, taste a lot like that. <laughs> now, of course, I'll sell it to you this way because it will be cheaper than what a Red Bull costs. And then you'll have to put it in your own bubble water. That's my plan as of today. Mm. Let me do two things here. So I want to, um, I want to go here. Uh, let's go to, all right, this is my website. So we are gonna go to, over here you can see that there's the store. And at the store, when you click on it, 
Um, you can look at all the different things here, but what I really want you to focus on is pucker up. And you can all praise Angela because I gave her this job like four minutes before I started this live show. That if you use the promo code, you get $5 off. Um, but I'm only going to do that for a week because I really need to know if people want to buy this. I, I need. I want you to try it. I want to hear your stories. I want to hear how well it works. I want to hear if what I wrote in the copy. So when I talk about copy, if you click on Pucker Up, this is what I mean by copy. And this is what I'm trying to do, which is truly teach you about why I did this, what it's filled with, what I'm thinking about, and how how to use that. And um, if you, uh, it, it's expensive. I, I wish it wasn't this expensive, but there are 20 doses of 20 amazing days <laughs> that are awesome. Uh, and uh, I, I, I want to hear what you think of it. So because you tuned into the early show uh, and uh, we will keep this coupon open for seven days that you get $5 off with, I, I want her to, I think it was UP, so up and 2022. That's the coupon code to get the $5 off. Um, I, I am not kidding when I say that the, these products that are in my store that are, um, you know, beef liver isn't an accident. I don't eat beef, beef liver. I kind of like beef. I even talked one of my kids into eating fermented beef. But I have a husband and other children that need to have iron in their diet. And they take that. They take uh, two to three capsules of that a day. They could take up to six. But these other uh, other tests and, and products are all at some level used in my family. So I hope this was, I hope this was helpful. Let's go over and see what kind of questions you guys have. Um, let's see here. I gotta go to, hold, oh, here we go. Um, there we go. Let's go here. All right. So let's start with Lucy Lou. She writes in and says, questions in the brains course. Uh, Dr. Boz said, if you have a ketone and a glucose molecule in front of the mitochondria, the mitochondria will use the ketone first. Does the body use glucose first or ketones? So this is really great. Um, there's actually a test question in the brains course about this. Um, and it is that uh, the test question, uh, don't do that, say, push save, never mind. Uh, the test question has to do with, um, you, know, you know, which molecules of fuel go first. The, listen very carefully that if the molecules are sitting in front of the mitochondria, the mitochondria will prefer the ketone to burn first. But in the live world, your body will not make a ketone when there's excess glucose. It will not make a ketone when there's excess insulin. Now, these are all relative terms. When I take a diabetic whose average blood sugars are 300, when we're lowering that blood sugar to 275, they're making ketones. Like, if my blood sugar was 275, I would never make a ketone. That's way too high for me. As you improve the body, that, that reason why the ketones are a flood, like the tsunami of ketones when they first go on the ketogenic diet and then they get to level, is because of that adaption. What, what was a high blood sugar before is now normal. So the, the insulin stabilized, the glucose production stabilized. So your liver won't release and produce ketones when there's a whole bunch of glucose around. Um, but if it's at a steady state, like your average number of glucose is 200, that's called diabetic if that's you, uh, and you lower it to 180, it will fill that bridge with ketones. When the two molecules are out there floating in front of the mitochondria, it will prefer to use the, the ketone over the glucose. But in human nature, it won't, it won't make a ketone. That's why exogenous ketones help my patients who are insulin resistant, and they do a great job, but then they plateau. And now I need them to stress their metabolism. But life's a little hairy. They can't like really focus on improving their metabolism because kids in life, you know, there's just the season, it, season has to match with the, with the will. And in the meantime, I just don't want their, their mitochondria, their ketone parts in the mitochondria to go back into dormancy. I want them to stay awake. 
and they need to see a ketone a few times a week in order to stay awake. So taking supplemental ketones during the time where you say, Doc, it's the holidays. It's too tempting. I can't do it. I will do a good job starting here, and I will work on that habit for the next three months as I get better, and I want them to succeed. So the part of the success is exposure to ketones um, and then get a little better, get a little better. And I think that's one of the secret parts that I did not expect to happen during that 21-day burst is that you know, people come in at different levels of their, of their maturity on how to do a ketogenic diet. And I don't need them to be the most mature one in the class. I need them to be better than when they came in and then hold that. And as we leave the next class, that, that was the other thing in the, in the um, products. If you put, click on courses, you can put your name on the list for our 21-day course that will happen uh, in the final week of, no, of January uh, and then into that first week of February. So it's 21 days. End of January, or early February is where, when we're going to lead the next class. And if you want to be part of that, you can put your uh, name on the deposit list. Um, and if you can't do it, we'll give you your money back. But that gets you on the list to say who's going to be in the next class where you work on the next difficult thing with a group of people and then hold that. And I must say, I didn't think I would get that much better during the 21-day course, but there's a reason my A1C has gone from 5.6 to 5.1, and that's because I did one thing better in the process. All right, let's keep going. Not about me. These are supposed to be your questions. <laughs> Let me go back to the questions. All right, Lucy Lou. So hopefully, yes, it does use glucose first, but it does not make glucose first. So the question is a very good one. So I feel it's hard to use products because of the limited eating window. Do you use them outside your eating window? And is it good to use BHB before a workout? So I tell my son to before wrestling practice that the best thing he should be using is, a, is to put ketones in circulation before he works out. It's not only fuel for his workout, it signals his liver to make ketones, okay? Uh, but the other thing is when you have a limited eating window, the suppression of appetite is a response to several things. Um, when people are really pushing their eating window too fast or they're really struggling, it's just too tempting, I tell them start with supplemental BHB at the beginning of your window. Not only does it burst your ketones so that you have energy, you have appetite suppression, and then you have the signal to your liver to make some more ketones, but their volume of food for the you know, sections where they do eat during that window, much smaller. Now, you got to work with me. You got to actually say, all right, I'm going to try to not eat this excessive amount. I'm going to try not to be gluttonous during my eating window. But it's so much easier when their appetite is suppressed and their energy is supplied. Uh, so I, I think I answered that. Okay, let's keep going here. Because uh, these questions bother me in that I feel like I never get a chance to answer them. Uh, so I'm taking this show to make sure I answer them. Why does your keto BHB raise my blood sugar and lower my ketones using it as directed? I'm strict carnivore and was 28 hours fasted. So this is one of those cases where for one of my 21-day um, courses, I don't know how I'm going to pull this off, but it's one of my dreams for the 21-day course that I won't be able to buy this for everybody, but I would be able to prescribe it. It would be to have everybody have a continuous glucose monitor. Because what's happening during that time is uh, when people do have a, um, you know, BHB supplements are, I mean, they're small particle sizes. So it, to some people who are really sensitive to the production of insulin, uh, it signals the body that food is coming. And they have just this abundant sugar response, I mean, the glucose response, where glucose is coming out of storage because the body thinks you're about, you're, you're eating something. And so they'll see that glucose go up and then the absorption of, you know, as the glucose goes up, the insulin goes up and the ketones, um, uh, again, if you could check them every uh, 15 minutes, you would be able to see that there's a place where they absorb into the blood system and they will get absorbed into the, you'll use them. So where that glucose, uh, the glucose is usually the response of their insulin resistance is bigger than they think it is. And the way they learn about this, every patient that's ever been stuck here, I, I figure out a way, whether it's one of the free samples or something to say, just wear the continuous glucose monitor, the good kind, the one that checks, it while, it checks your sugars while you're sleeping, while you're awake, and they're 
their mind is blown. Like, what do you mean I chew gum and the glucose went up? I didn't eat anything. I'm like, I know. Welcome to insulin resistance. It's hard. But the process that's happening in somebody who's really insulin resistant, and even when they're, they're fasting, they should see this constant lowering of glucose. Uh, when they stimulate a system that for 30 years produced too much insulin, had too many carbs, and now they're doing the right thing. They're doing the, you know, she's a strict carnivore diet, faster for 28 hours. I would be saying, I need you to get to 36 hours of fasting. That's where most of my insulin resistance people start to have improvement. They do not improve under 36 hours of fasting. The insulin continues to surge and win. And when I say start, that you eat nothing in 20, 36 hours, I mean, I mean, I would let you do ketones supplements, like no sugar, especially an insulin resistant patient. But I would not recommend even the fats. The fats turned into um, great to do when they're not fasting, uh, really good ketone production when they're not fasting. Um, but when they're fasting, especially my insulin resistant patients, oh, it, it, this is exactly what happens. So. Paul, I don't know if I exactly answered the question. I, I hope that you can see that it is a bit complicated based on where whether or not you are this insulin resistant. I mean, I'm guessing you are because I've had the question and I've had this scenario so many times with patients that um, the rise and fall is relative and I need you know almost a constant level of data for two hours afterwards. So checking every 15 minutes to see exactly where the ketones go up and where do they go down. The other thing that I did notice, I, I caught a couple of them in that 21 day course is their ketones um, flatlined and they were, and their sugar, uh, it, it, it did not have a range of, of normal. It, it really got stuck. So that was because the meter was wrong. The meter wasn't working right. So if you have an old meter and you're looking to improve meters, um, there is a trade up system on my favorites page that explains all that. I'll let you go to Dr. Bob's favorites, click on trading up your ketone monitor. Okay, I just heard they were working on making BHB esters, which last longer in the body <laughs> and taste better. Pucker up is not an ester. It is simply a the beta hydroxybutyric acid, that, which is the chemical before they turn it into a salt. I'll be honest, I, I tasted some of these uh, new and improved esters at the last uh, Metabolic Summit. And I had a couple of pretty pretty stoic uh, interns, both the interns went, and they're young men and they're not too picky. But, oh my goodness, they could not, oh, I could not drink them. I, I couldn't do it. I, I think I got a pretty good stomach. Mm -mm. If that's better, I would hate to taste what the heck was it before. So be careful when you hear, it tastes better. The poor people trying to sell it to, oh my gosh, by the end of the weekend, they were so beat up by saying, oh, it just, in fact, I had, they're so good at raising your ketones. I thought, okay, I'll just do this when I'm not traveling. Maybe it's, the, I don't know, the California air. I don't know. So I brought it home. I opened up the can or the little vial and I smelled it and thought, Oh God, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it. I would rather fast for three days and get high ketones than have that. Oh, it was awful. Pucker up isn't that bad. My husband says to say it's vile, but it's like really sour lemon. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next one. So um, let's go to Tammy. Tammy says, those of us who struggle to maintain ketones during an illness, would these be a good as uh, a would these be good as a tool in our toolbox to help us when needed? Yeah, this is the is one of the reasons why I'm I am really excited about this is it is strictly ketones. There's no sweetener, there's no salts, it is just beta hydroxybutyric acid. That's why this little amount raises the ketones so much and costs so much. I mean, this turns into about 15 capsules of BHB, um, like when you chemically turn them into salts, that's about 12 to 15 capsules of BHB for ketones in a capsule. So now the liquid is not as portable as the capsules are. The capsules are, are more portable. All right, Aloha22, let's try his question. Um, I'm confused. <laughs> is she drinking pucker up only or pucker up? Oh yeah, so what I was trying to show you is I think people 
should be mixing these because you don't, it, it is pretty sour. You might not like it. <laughs> and so I don't want you to waste your money. If you've got this at home, if you've got the, you know, this at home, and you're at that stage where you took this for a while, but it tastes pretty sweet, or it's triggering you to eat more sweets, well then make it more sour. This has got a great uh, taste, but if you add even a half of a vial to the dose of this, it gets it pretty sour, and it like triples the ketones. So now you have a high amount of ketones, because these are great for taste, and especially when they're new, they really are looking for that sweet replacement. Put the sweet replacement in with ketones. And then um, the next step is put it in with ketones plus like supercharge it. And if you really want to see the best answer, I hate to admit this, that my kids found, wow, with Red Bull, it does really taste good. We'll do one more question and then I get to go to my event here. Um, should I not ha have any artificial s sweeteners when staying keto? No. Artificial sweeteners, that's a good question. Actually, I'll do a couple more questions. Um, um, artificial sweeteners really uh, get a bad rap, and I've, I've done some educating on this. They're not my favorite thing. They're pretty tough on gut, so if you've got an unhealthy gut, um, I don't like using them. If you're allergic to stevia, you can't. I mean, it's going to give you uh, ulcers or you're going to have a a reaction like itchy though they don't feel good they feel awful actually if they're allergic to it um, but when when every every trial that's looked at comparing sugar substitutes to sugar I mean to the real sugar um, I mean it's the lesser evil there's no calories in it it does do a better job do I think that more people should be migrating towards less sweetener overall yes but is that the first thing out of the door to take care of? No. If you're struggling with sweetness, use one of the sweeteners. It's not forever. I'd love you to have less of it because eating sweeteners really does turn into a cycle of more sweeteners. But um, to say, oh, you need to be a purist and have no artificial sweeteners. No, that's not even that's not what the studies say too. The studies clearly show that in a chronic disease management, the substitute for sweeteners it was always better than the sweeteners. The, the perfect people, which I don't know that every, any of those ever came to my practice, but they had none, actually had higher binge rates. They would binge. They would fall off the wagon and binge more. So especially when you're looking at like harm reduction, like put, get on something that you can manage, that you can stabilize and do. And I would work on having it less frequently, but to satisfy the sweetness with an artificial sweetener is, I mean, it's, way better than the sugar and it doesn't cause the insulin to grow up and it helps you lose weight when you use this artificial sweetener it it really is a better option so it's just that I have a husband who's allergic to them and so I like being married and when he found my bottle of EHB he's like you need to make this into a product I'm like really and then when I saw how well it weighs his ketones I'm like mm, it's probably right Okay, let's do a couple more. Should I not? Okay, that was what Aloha says. BHB is more immediate ketones versus MCT, which lasts up to six hours, correct? Correct. So would the liquid ketones give you that immediate ketone boost with the idea that it simulates the body to create its own? Yes, I can hire you. That's exactly what that, that's what I'm trying to say. And you said it better than I did. So, oh good, I got to the last question. Yay. Uh, <laughs> all right, folks. I, I do uh, really w want to thank you, A, for tuning in early because I am I did this show two hours early today. Happy birthday to me. I'm 51. And I, um, I, I really want to reward you. So please use the coupon to get $5 off. And I would love to hear your stories. I would love to hear your stories. So on the page to leave a review about the Pucker Up, it would be awesome to share. I This is my blood sugar. This is my ketones before I took it. And if you take the shot of it, oh my goodness, be careful. It's very powerful. It's very potent. But what were your numbers at 15 minutes? And then what were your numbers at a half an hour? And then how do you, because you shouldn't do that. You can do an experiment, but I would not recommend that. It's really, it's really sour. Um, 
All right, so if you would like to see what are the other benefits of circulating ketones, I did do a much shorter video, a much shorter explanation. You'll find it on the end screen in the replay. Uh, again, YouTube gives us big points when you click the end screen, so thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for helping me satisfy what I think one of God's gifts are that I'm supposed to share, and that is continuing to teach about medical problems in a way that improves people's lives. So God bless you. Let's